AM 790 WNIS McCreeny on your radio. Now, we heard from this gentleman a uh, while back. He was supposed to be on at the anniversary, but Bob, as is so often the case, screwed it up. But he is with us now, and his name is Marvin Barish, and he's the author of USS Cyclops, a fascinating story, especially for those of us in Hampton Roads. Good morning, Mr. Barish. How are you today? All right. How are you, sir? Outstanding. A pleasure to have you on. You know, I, 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 I like history. I read all about history. I was totally unaware of this until I heard from you, the USS Cyclops. Now, what I want you to do is tell us your relationship with this incident, what drove you, what inspired you, sir, to write the book. Well, many years ago, my father um, told me about his uncle, Lawrence Merkel, who was a fireman on the ship. And uh, the, uh, he told me that the, the ship was, was lost. He gave me the name of the ship. And over the years, I uh, had done some genealogy study and decided, you know what, it's, it's really time for me to research this uncle my father told me about. Mm-hmm. So I uh, found that the only way that I could find out anything about him was actually to start researching the ship. And everything just started opening up. It was, uh, it was really amazing to find this kind of story uh, about a ship that, that actually disappeared, no trace ever found. Mm-hmm. So um, it just uh, became, uh, I guess, really a, a life study. I've been uh, working on this since 1997. The, uh, the first book came out in 2010. I've uh, written a prequel to it. And now I'm working on a uh, follow-on volume as more information has become available. Uh, there were uh, 309 lost with the ship. Today, actually, 100 years ago, the ship was due in Baltimore with a cargo of manganese ore, mm-hmm. uh, war material. And uh, as uh, you alluded to, uh, Norfolk was a home port of the Cyclops. And uh, for, for quite a while, she was one of the largest and uh, fastest uh, U.S. Navy ships afloat. But her primary job was actually to fuel the, uh, the fleet, uh, whether at port or on the move. But it would fuel them with coal? Uh, coal. And she also carried fuel oil because okay. at that time the Navy was transitioning to the, the brand new fuel. That time would and be when? That time would be when? What year? Well, the, the Cyclops was in service from 1910 to 1918. So okay. there were, wow. we actually had some battleships that were dual fuel, mm-hmm. the hybrid ships that uh, could take either the liquid fuel or the uh, traditional coal. Okay. All right. And so let me get this straight. Now, it just disappeared. Wasn't it in view of some other ships? Usually they don't travel alone. No other ships saw what was going on. What were the weather conditions? Do we know? As best as I could tell, the Cyclops traveled alone. She made a layover at Bridgetown, Barbados on the way. Well, there was a, actually a U.S. diplomat on board. It was uh, our U.S. Consul uh, General to Brazil. Mm-hmm. And he requested uh, passage on the ship, uh, received it. He wanted to... Uh, become uh, an officer in the, the U.S. Army. Uh, the First World War was on at the time, and uh, he, he decided that uh, he wanted to play his part, and uh, a, a layover at uh, Bridgetown was negotiated, uh, the last sighting of the ship as she deported, uh, she departed uh, the port of uh, Bridgetown was uh, March 4th, 1918. So she was due back in, uh, in, in Baltimore on March 13th and uh, was never seen again. No trace ever found. Wow. No trace ever found. Now, Mr. Barris, are there any theories? Do you have any theories as to what happened? I, I believe she succumbed to bad weather. There, there were some reports of, of disturbances uh, out in the ocean. Mm-hmm. The uh, the ship also had uh, one engine that was uh, non functional. It was her starboard engine. Uh, the uh, there were thoughts of perhaps trying to repair her back in Brazil, where she picked up the manganese ore. But it was decided uh, the best way to handle this was actually to order some replacement parts from the shipbuilding company in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Have those parts sent to Baltimore, where she would be repaired and placed back in service. And, of course, that never happened. What day was the ship lost? Nobody knows precisely what day. It's just that the the last sighting of the ship as she departed uh, Bridgetown was March 4th, 1918. Okay, March 4th, 1918. Do we know if there were any... We're at war with Germany by then. From March of 1917, we're at war. Any indications at all that there were any German ships around or submarines or anything like that? 
there were some reports that uh, there were some submarines perhaps within striking distance. Yeah. Um, I wrote about that, uh, and uh, it, it just – there was no definite confirmation, but – did you check the German records of the Unterwasser boats? Did you check the German records? The um, actually at the armistice hearings in Paris following the war, the Germans were actually asked about the ship and whether or not they struck her, mm -hmm. and they indicated no. I've, I've tried to find uh, any any records possible as far as uh, submarines. I, I did find one that was, like I mentioned, that was possibly in position where she could strike. Yeah. But had she been struck by an enemy vessel, there would be debris, there would be oil slicks, there would mm -hmm. be all kinds of uh, okay. remnants of such an attack. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. I believe she probably went turtle and probably sank to the bottom. Now, did your Correct. uncle, did you, obviously you never knew your uncle because you sound like you weren't around in 1918, but no. did, he, did he leave behind a family? Did he leave behind a wife and kids and stuff? Or what do no, we... he, was, he was a young man. Young guy. Uh, age 23, never yeah. got married. Uh, he had uh, several brothers and sisters, and uh, um, they and uh, his, his parents, my great-grandparents, grieved uh, for him for many years. Mm-hmm. And uh, sure. matter of fact, for many years, they were looking for a, a picture of him. They never even had a photograph oh, of him. That's and that's uh, through my research, I was able to find one early on. But uh, no, it's just uh, uh, he, like many others on the ship, were, were young men. Some were even younger. Mm -hmm. and, of uh, course. It, it, just, it, it was a big tragedy. A lot of, a lot of families, like I mentioned, 309 oh, yeah. lost. There were a lot of passengers, Navy passengers on the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it just—it was the kind of thing that made front-page news in its day. Mm -hmm. And uh, before long, she became a ship of legend, which uh, was quite unfortunate because it puts her in that so-called Bermuda Triangle world, which mm -hmm. really doesn't uh, doesn't help her any. But she actually did a lot of service at the time. She. Uh, she, she, she at one time was called a uh, a monster collier, collier being a coal carrying vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, she also was um, she she had kind of a bad start when she was was launched. Uh, she was supposed to actually glide down the ways at the shipyard uh, cramp shipyard in Philadelphia, but she got stuck, hmm. which wasn't really a good omen, and so they had to jack up the uh, the bow of the ship and kind of coax her into the water. So there, there were some that would say perhaps that's a bad omen. Uh, it just uh, a <laughs> very, um, very strange start. But she actually w would carry enough coal uh, to service many ships. Uh, matter of fact, she could carry 12,500 tons of coal, which was a pretty respectable amount yeah. and be able to travel. Um, she also was part of the first convoy system that went to France when we first got involved in uh, the Great War. Mm -hmm. So um, she she also carried part of uh, what became uh, Base Hospital Number 18 over at Saint Nazaire in France, mm -hmm. and that was uh, organized by the Johns Hopkins Hospital uh, in Baltimore. Now, how can uh, people get the book, or how many books they, are there? How many books are – well, actually, there, there's two. Uh, one specifically so far about the Cyclops. The other is a prequel that goes into a little bit more of the history of the captain of the Cyclops when he served on another ship on which there was a murder. That book was uh, Murder on the Aberenda. Mm -hmm. um, U.S. Cyclops and the Aberenda book are both available through Heritage Books. Uh, they uh, have a website uh, – and uh, um, I, I should mention that the, uh, the, the, the ship had a uh, history of severe rolling. Even as early as 1916, she rolled 50 degrees, that's 50 degrees to starboard, hmm. and 46 degrees to port all in one day. And uh, I've, I've showed that to some Navy people, mm -hmm. and that's not a healthy sign. Hmm. So, uh, okay. But, but it's, yeah, but as far as the, the, uh, the, the book... Um, it's it's a it's a massive book. It really covers everything, including the um, the construction of the ship, all the timelines, 
all the people that I've been able to find who ever served on the ship, as well as a uh, complete list of all those who perished. Mm -hmm. So um, there are over 1,600 people that served on the ship during her uh, during her lifetime. Mm. All right. Well, most interesting. I want to thank you for getting in touch with me and making me aware of this. The USS Cyclops and the author. Mr. Marvin Barish. Mr. Barish, thank you so much for coming on WNIS today and making us aware of this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Good day to you. I tell you what, just that the ship was named the Cyclops. The Cyclops. Wow. What an incredible story. I had never heard of that before. Ship out of Norfolk in March of 1918. Yeah, when I heard that, like I said, boom, okay, what was going on there? Well, World War One, but who knows? And then one wonders, would there have been records... Like, if a German ship had sunk it, an, un an, an underwater boat, a submarine, uh, did they make it back? Uh, did the Germans have accurate records of everything that happened? How many of the records were actually destroyed? I would have, you know, who knows? But anyway, if you are, are interested in that, I don't know what it is. I got this thing here on Amazon. It says, buy new, $152. Whoa, okay. Well, I would imagine you could get it uh, more economically than that. But uh, check it out for yourself. The name of the book is USS Cyclops, C-Y-C-L-O-P-S. Why that name? I mean, you know, you think of a ship named after somebody or something, but the Cyclops. Okay. The USS Cyclops. All right, cover, 2010. The gentleman's name, Marvin W. Barish. You spell it B-A-R-R-A-S-H. Marvin W. Barish, B-A-R-R-A-S-H.